Hi students, welcome to exercise 14a, uh, the sum and difference identities. So these are found on your formula sheet. You'll find this directly from your formula sheet, uh, probably exactly as written here. Um, it's basically, uh, these are different ways to find angles, uh, exact values of angles that we don't necessarily have on the unit circle. Um, so for example, if we had the cos of two, sum of two angles, so like let's say 30 and 45 degrees, you can now find the exact value of cos of 75 degrees. So these would be the formulas that you could use. You could either do the sum of their angles or the difference. All right, so let's take a look at this first expression here. Um, we have a sine of pi over 9, not an exact value that we know. Cos of 5 pi over 36, another, non, uh, another value we do not know of. Uh, it's not on the unit circle. And then, obviously, these two values as well. Well, this is not an expression we could calculate, but if you look closely at this identity here, so sine of alpha plus beta, so those are just two angles, is equal to sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. Well, that's what we have here. We have sine alpha cos beta, so those are two different angles, plus cos alpha sine beta. So this expression could be rewritten as a little bit simpler version of sine of the sum of those two angles, right? So the sum of those two angles. So we'd have pi over 9 plus 5 pi over 36. Okay, well, this expression is a lot more simple than this one. Let's see if we can simplify these two angles to see if uh, we can get an exact value. So to add those two, you need a common denominator, right? So your common denominator will be 36. So just kind of multiply that fraction by 4. So you have 4 over 4 pi over 36 plus 5 pi over 36. And you take the sum of those two. So you have 9 pi over 36. And notice we have a common factor of 9. So we divide each by 9 to get pi over 4. Hey, this is a value that we know exact. We know that the exact value of this is square root 2 over 2. This comes directly from our unit circle. So this expression over here, okay, simplified using a sum identity, gives us exactly this value. So this is this exactly. <clears throat> okay, so this one, find the exact value of tan of 75 degrees. Well, we cannot find the val exact value tan 75 degrees because 75 degrees is in our unit circle. But note, these sums and differences of angles can be determined uh, can determine the exact value of trigonometric ratios that is not on the unit circle. So, for example, using two angles that I know, I could say, well, I know that 75 degrees is a combination of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. And this sum of two different angles has a formula. And if I look at the formula, you just have to flip sides if you'd like. This is... 10, whoops, sorry, wrong button, 10 of 35 degrees, or sorry, 30 degrees, plus 10 of 45 degrees, divided by 1 minus 10, 30 degrees, 10, 45 degrees. So this is the identity that was on your first page of your notes, so it's just tan alpha plus beta is equal to tan alpha plus tan beta, divided by 1 minus tan alpha, tan beta. And these are exact values that we know, or we can actually calculate, at least calculate, I mean, uh, from the unit circle. So I'll let you guys take a look at the unit circle. So 10 of 35 degrees, or 30 degrees, sorry, is um, just to kind of place ourselves on the unit circle here. 30 degrees is right here. 10 would be y over x. y is 1 half. x is square root of 3 over 2. So then you have 1 over square root of 3 plus 10 of 45 degrees, that's 1, because they have the same value here, y over x, and then that's the only two values you need to calculate, because, whoops, that's a 3, not a 2, 3, and then 1. So I've just replaced the value of 10, 30 with square, 1 over square root of 3, and 10, 45 with 1. Okay, so all we have to do now, because this is a complex fraction here, you have fraction within the fraction, so we've got some simplification to do. So you got 1 over square root of 3 plus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over square root of 3, because simply this times 1 is that. Okay, keep going here. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the common denominator. So this is a complex fraction. Anytime you see fractions within a large fraction, obviously there's going to be sums and differences, I would just look at all my denominators and multiply by that, total, by that number. We might revis revisit this in class as well. So, look what's going to happen. This square root of 3 multiplies this fraction. What you get is 1, because it gets, it gets rid of that square root of 3. But also, this square root of 3 multiplies that 1, which gives you square root of 3. Alright, on the denominator, this square root of 3 multiplies the 1. What we get is square root of 3. And now the square root of 3 multiplies 1 over square root of 3, you're left with minus 1. And this would be the exact value of this expression. Okay, do another one. This time we'll work with radians. Alright, find the exact value of cos of 5 pi over 12. Okay, well, first of all, these are over 12. So what I usually do, or I recommend to do these problems, is I change all my radians into over 12. So for example, pi over 6, oops, pi over 6 is 2 pi over 6. Okay, uh, pi over 4, well that's 3 pi over 12. And pi over 3 is equal to 4 pi over 12. Okay, so this is just an example. I could calculate all of them over 12. But if you look closely, if I took the sum of 2 pi over 12 and 3 pi over 12, that would give us cos of 5 pi over 12. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, this is the same thing as saying cos of 2 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. Okay, and simplifying these two fractions, again, just taking these values, what I'm left with is cos of pi over 6 plus pi over 4. Okay, so this sum gives us this value. And all I have to do is use my uh, um, <coughs> sorry, um, addition identity, right? Cos alpha plus beta. So again, look at your first page. You're going to see that this will be equal to cos of pi over 6, cos pi over 12, so it's cos alpha, cos beta, minus sine alpha, which is pi over 6, and sine beta, which is pi over 4. And we know this, these exact values. We know that cos of pi over 6, that's simply square root of 3 over 2. Right? Cos of pi over 4, that's square root of 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 6, well, that's just 1 half. And sine of pi over 4, well, that's square root of 2 over 2. And we multiply those together, so you get square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4. And we can write it all in one fraction because they have the same denominator over 4. So this right here is the exact value for cos of 5 pi over 12. Okay, this is a little bit of a harder question. Um, we recognize that here, sine of alpha equals 1 fifth. Uh, this would be coming from exercise probably about 9, where we saw questions like this. Um, all we got to do, or maybe 10, uh, all we have to do is, by knowing sine alpha is equal to 1 fifth, we can find the cos alpha value from that. Um, so we're saying, and we'll get to the rest of the question shortly, um, both points, so the point alpha is not in the first quadrant, and sine is positive, right? So let's just go under alpha, work with alpha here. So here, alpha is not in the first quadrant, which means we have to be in the second quadrant, because sine is positive, and I just drew a triangle here. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So with that information, I can find my value of x. So uh, to find the value of x, Pythagorean theorem, so 5 squared minus 1 squared equals to x squared. You have 24, so 25 minus 1 equals to x squared, and we square root that, so we have plus or minus square root of 24 equals x. And in our case, because we are in the uh, second quadrant, x is going to be a negative value in the second quadrant. I understand that this is a positive length of a triangle, but in our case, because we're in the sec negative side, we're going to say that x is equal to negative square root of 24. Okay, so by getting that information, we now know that cos of alpha is equal to negative square root of 24 
over hypotenuse, which is 5. So square, negative square root of 24, hypotenuse 5. All right. Well, why did we need to find that? Well, let's go back to the question because we're going to do a little bit more of that. We're asking to find the value of cos alpha minus beta. Well, the, the identity is cos alpha minus beta is equal to, I'm going to move over a bit, uh, cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha, a little bit more, uh, sine beta. That's the identity, again, on your first page of your notes. So notice that I need to know the value of cos alpha, cos beta, sine alpha, sine beta. Well, what am I given? I'm given sine alpha in the question, and I'm given cos beta in the question. Well, that means I still need to find the value of cos alpha and sine beta. Well, what did I just find over here? This is cos alpha. So now I know I have this value. So now the last thing I need to find is sine beta. Well. We're going to find sine beta knowing cos beta. So that was alpha. So now I'm going to do the same work for beta. So I am cos positive, right? And we're not in the first quadrant. So the point beta is not in the first quadrant. So I'm going to draw my triangle in the fourth quadrant, right? Because cos is positive. And cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means the value of y I don't know yet. So you have 13 squared minus 5 squared equals y squared. Um, 169 minus 25 equals y squared. I take that out. 144 equals the y squared. Square root of 144 is plus or minus 12, right? And uh, again, because we are in the fourth quadrant, our y value be negative. Again, I understand that this side length is positive, but in terms of what quadrant we're in, we're going to say that our y is negative 12. And therefore, sine of beta is equal to negative 12 over 13, which would be opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, well, all we're left to find here is I need to identify the value of this. So let's rewrite it on here. Um, we're going to have cos of alpha minus beta is equal to cos alpha, cos beta, uh, plus sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, so cos alpha, that's one of them we found. It's this one, right? So this is negative square root of 24 over 5. Cos beta, well, that's one that was given in the question, right? You go over here, cos beta is over here. So that's 5 over 13. So 5 over 13. Sine alpha, well, that was given in the question. That was one-fifth. You can take a look at the top of the page. And sine beta, well, that's what we found over here. It's negative 12 over 13. Okay, so now we just got some simple multiplications to do. So you have negative 5 square root of 24 over 65. And you're going to have negative 12 over 65. Right, so notice that the sign's negative because you have one negative over those three terms, or well, those two terms and the sign here. So, a little bit more, we're left with negative 5, square root of 24, minus 12, all over 65. And this is the exact value of cos alpha minus beta. Alright, we're going to talk about common errors in the classroom. Good luck guys, hope this all made sense.